George Ciampa was born in Boston, Massachusetts to Italian parents on June 6, 1925. He has two kids and currently splits his time living in Torrance and Palm Desert. Okay, my name is George Ciampa, C-I-A-M-P-A, -A, and uh, that's pronounced like C-H-A-M-P-A. -A. Uh, it's Italian. My parents uh, were immigrants from Italy, so I'm first generation. I'm uh, FBI, which is full-blooded Italian. <laughs> <laughs> what do you remember most about your early childhood? What happened to me as a child, uh, five years old, I attended a, a cousin's a funeral. Uh, she was like eight years old uh, when I was five, and it was very, very emotional. I remember the graveside services when they were lowering the casket in the grave, and my mother, who had lost her voice before, her voice came back as she screamed, Teresa, when they were lowering the casket. And I have never forgotten that. Despite growing up with an extreme fear of death, George Champa enlisted in the United States Air Corps. He was reassigned, however, to the 607th Grave Registration. After being reassigned, he was put on a ship headed to England for training. And going overseas on this ship, we were down in a hold where we ate and slept in bunks that are close together, and the latrine, which is a, the Navy calls it the head, the Army called the latrine, it was at the top of the stairs, which is called a ladder in Navy terminology. Well, the toilets that overflow and the urinals, and they come down the steps into the hold where we had to stand up and eat at these counters. The floor was slimy black, so, you know, it was no great trip going over there. <laughs> uh, in fact, I have never been on a cruise ship. <laughs> We were, we landed on D-Day, but, but uh, there, there were uh, uh, four of us platoons left, so two platoons landed on Omaha Beach and two platoons landed on Utah Beach. <clears throat> so our job was to gather the dead, but before landing, uh, we were broadside to shore. And so when we got off of that ship, we got off and the rope ladder is opposite the side from shore, mm -hmm. but all the time we're there, we can hear the artillery, they call them uh, screaming memes, or the 88s, uh, 88 caliber artillery shooting at all these ships. And, uh, and we could hear them, you could hear them screech, that's why we call them screaming memes. And if they're not hitting you, you can hear them screaming. Mm -hmm. And so. What was your first order of business after you landed on Omaha Beach? Our first job was gathering dead paratroopers because paratroopers uh, in error came down in, in a channel and they, they were weighted down because they had grenades, or they had rifles, you know, they had, they had all this stuff on them. And so the parachute come down over them, they, they drowned. And so we picked them up and wrapped them in their parachutes and, and buried them. What was it like in Belgium at the Battle of the Bulge? In September, late September, the artillery was behind us. And we called them long toms, and they'd be shooting over us. And our planes were coming over us. But then the weather got bad. And then you didn't, these guys couldn't fly uh, that easily, the fighter planes, although they were bombers coming over. And so we, we spent five months right there in picking up bodies in the bulge, bringing them to the Andre Chappelle Temporary Cemetery. What did you do after the war? I needed a chill out, as you guys use that expression now, chill out. Chill out. I really needed to chill oh, out, yeah. and I chilled out for seven months. And you know, that helped me a whole lot, because if I had come home right away, you know, my sisters told me I had nightmares and everything, but I don't even remember. I don't remember a nightmare, and I used to run around with a bunch of guys, and somebody buy the beer for us, and running around, and I ran around and ran around and, until 1948. I decided to go. I hated high school. For one thing, I was too little, and I wasn't in any kind of sports because I was too little. And uh, 
And so uh, I decided one day to go to college. After graduating from USC, George Champa went on to develop one of the first condominiums in the state of California. I had, had, a, had a guy friend, and he was a big developer. And he said, George, why do you want to do an investment group and give away all your money? He said, I'll build the... I'll get you the financing and I'll build the building for $20,000. I had experience doing some building, by the way. My brother was a contractor. And so I wasn't going to build it, but uh, when I got him, I thought I had an angel. It turned out to be the, be the devil. Oh, yeah. And uh, he really shafted me. And it's a long, long story, but he was able to take that building away from me. Oh. The, the condominium. One of the first three condominiums in California. And after that, George Ciampa went to work for the L.A. Times. The then, uh, two years later, I got married in 68, February of 68. My wife had lymphoma, and the, my kid, my daughter, uh, was five, and my son was four when she became ill. And she lived for five years with treatments, you know, losing her hair and going through all, all of that. And, and, uh, and so... Uh, when she passed away, uh, my daughter was 11 and my son was 10. And, uh, but for five years before that, I was sitting on a keg of dynamite because they said she was going to die in like six months when she lived for five years. And uh, my wife was a very devoted mother, uh, unbelievable, and a, and a genuine uh, uh, wife. And she was from Montana. So when my kids got out of uh, college, or they, excuse me, when they started college, first my daughter, and then my son, then I was free. So then I started dating, which was like 10 years after my wife died. She died in 81, I started dating in 91. And so then uh, I met my wife now, that was a widow, and she had three older kids because she got married when she was 18, and I didn't get married until I was 42. So my kids are younger than hers, but my kids now, my daughter just turned 46, and I can't believe it. And my son, January 2nd, turned 45. And I, can't, I just can't believe they're that old. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're very close, of course, and, and uh, they had a hard time with their mother dying, uh, even in, in years, in teenage years, and even past then, and they, they had had a psychiatric help. Uh, they didn't realize their mother was dying, and I used to take them to the hospital down here, and they couldn't go in the room. They wouldn't allow children in. They had to wave. She was up on the seventh floor. They had to wave to her, you know. And so, uh, it. Uh, I never told them that she was dying. I just told them that she was very ill. And then when I came home uh, from the hospital one day, and and, uh, and told them. Their, their mom was in heaven, you know, and, and uh, so it's a little, <laughs> a little hard for me to talk about that. Anyway, uh, George Champa is a U.S. Army World War II veteran of five campaigns in Europe, including D-Day and the Battle of the Bulge. He has formed a nonprofit organization appropriately named Let Freedom Ring, and has developed four documentaries with notable celebrities like John Voight. George's strive to educate the modern generation about the true prices of freedom have been unprecedented, and he is currently in the process of authoring two books. His sacrifice to this nation easily marks him down in the history books as a true American hero. I've roamed and rambled, I followed my footsteps to the sparkling sands of the diamond desert And all around me A voice was sounding This land was made for you and me This land was made for you and me